morning, everybody. Good. Thank, thanks very much. And thanks, Louis, and thanks, Rachel. This was really good to see the, the objectives of the, of the year. Um, uh, again, thanks, Fundación Berrio, Argentina, for bringing us along. It's kind of an interesting feeling to be back in real, real life, huh? because I think we got, we got too used to, to this virtual mode. In fact, we got people in the connected to Zoom. I don't know how many people we got, but there are some people in the about 20 people. So hi, whoever is the camera. So thanks for thanks for connecting. So in the next 10 minutes, <clears throat> what I will try to do is to do a, a little review of what something we should have done in 2020, which is kind of sitting together to evaluate the progress of the implementation of the global strategic plan. <clears throat> I don't want to go too back, so otherwise it makes me feel old. I have seen myself in some of the photos, so I realize quite a lot of years has passed since I first started. But probably you might remember that photo from 2015. This is the work, the, the press conference we had in Geneva when the, we had the global, uh, the global uh, conference. And it was the first time the Director General of the OI, Director General of uh, WHO, sit together. We were also, also there. FAO was also presented. And at that time, we set some objectives. That they say, well, the, the, the name of the conference was The Time Is Now. That was a few years ago. So the time was, was at the time. And I think we, we kind of make good progress. But the objective of that meeting was to really identify the proof of concept, case for investment, one health intersectoral collaboration, for a vision agenda. And I think today we do need to make an exercise of being critical, what can be done better what has been done well, what needs to be maintained. But the fact that we maintain these objectives current probably is a, is a signal that uh, we're still struggling with some of the issues. And Luis, you really nicely outlined what were the struggling long ago, that's still the struggle. At the conference, that was probably at some, at some level innovative because it was not a scientific conference. It was really, thinking about how we can move the agenda forward. We identified that there was a fragmented effort. There were quite a lot of effort, but still fragmented. The fact that we need to work together, this thing that's been kind of the theme is start small and then scale up. And the importance of these three pillars, not dogs vaccination, education, and make sure that people being bitten, they got access to post-explosive prophylaxis, still valid. At the time, we created this uh, global framework, but the industry, and this is important, at the meeting, at that meeting, some of you were there, the industry say, what you need is a business plan. We cannot keep talking about strategic policy. We need a business plan, costing that can really drive the chain. And then that is when we started with the uh, 2015. It was not a business plan because we realized we still need a global plan. But we set three objectives that they are the one driving the work today, which is make sure that we use, we make the best of the, the existing vaccines, we generate, innovate, and overall sustain the commitment. Three phases. Today, I wanted to kind of focus in the first phase, as the past, a little bit of history. 2018, 2020, we identified 29 priority countries that we wanted to target. We're expecting to mobilize 16.5 million US dollar altogether. We wanted the plan to be cost around 50 million. I'm not going to say if it's up, up to everybody to kind of be self-critic how far we are with that uh, the implementation of phase one. But we wanted to start with the more advanced countries and promote this snowball effect, identify champions, regional coordination. We wanted to use rabies as a model of one health. And it was very clear from the very beginning that investing in rabies it was not only investing in eliminating a virus, it was really a strength in the health system. And that was the plan for this first phase that again should have finished in 2020. But we did uh, some progress and we evaluate and we say, well, one of the achievements, I think now we can be proud saying at least we are more united. We managed to harmonize guidelines, standard. We got new partners. And the fact that every, every year there is a new phase is coming in, very impressive to see uh, the participation in the forum where people are willing to participate. People are never being engaged in rabies elimination. They are kind of interested in what we are doing. 
we're ready the engagement. Extremely important people are engaged. I think in the, the last few years, the level of engagement at high, high level from the three organizations is pretty high. It's DGFAO, WHO, and, and now it's called GOA, as you know, former funded as OI. But uh, there was a level of engagement at the highest level. Um, of course, the traditional uh, engagement of, of you guys from PRP remain at the same level, which is, has been, we are not losing anybody in the, in the journey. But what we have learned? Well, I, I, I just brought seven lessons just as a way of provoking some thinking on you, but for sure, if we do that uh, as a proper brainstorm structure session, I'm pretty sure there will be many more, many more lessons. But let's try to start with the first lessons, I, at least myself. And this is something I learned in Paracom meeting, the first one, I think Luis, you brought that, that proverb, that if we want to go fast, just, just go along. But if you want to go far, go together. And over there, say, yeah, we let try to go together, but not too far. There is a need of, of speed up. And the first lesson I, we learned in the first three years of implementation of the global strategic plan is that the tripartite plus GARC alone cannot do it. It's something that we do need to share responsibilities. And that was the main driver of, of what we have now with the forum. It's a shared responsibility. So everybody needs to be accountable of what we are saying. It's not, all right, you guys in, the, in Paris or in Geneva or in Rome, this is up to you to mobilize resources and, and just do it. And that's not going to work. I think we, we are definitely play a role, but everybody, every of the person here and, and then online, we do play a role. And there is many people out there that they are not probably as active as should be. Second lesson I learned, or we learned, I say I because I just put that together and share with some colleagues, but I don't want to be like an institutional lesson learned. No? Um, we know we can do pilot, but enough is enough. That's not any value of, of running pilot or proof of concept. Of course, if we go all together with all the resources and we vaccinate dogs, the disease gets controlled. That's a, a matter of fact. But I think it's, again, it's an, we need to scale up. Um, we cannot scale up with, without a proper national strategy. The countries need to have a document that being endorsed by the national authorities and that need to underpin all the action. It's not just external help or a highly motivated group of people in a country. Yeah, they can make a difference at a community level, which is extremely valuable and extremely important. But what we are learning is that if we really want to achieve the goal of zero by 30, we do need to have a strategy and that strategy needs to be from the very beginning, following the One Health approach, so it's not any longer the veterinary services taking responsibilities or the or the of the public health authorities. It need to be a proper One Health plan. Third lesson learned, which I got a lot of problem with the seventy percent silver bullet. Huh? Again, from the easy to here in this beautiful place, it's so easy to say, "Oh, let's try to vaccinate seventy percent of the dogs and job done." Right. So we buy the vaccine, we buy the syringe, which catch the dogs. A job done. What I learned from you that got the field experience is that this is not always possible. We do need to be very strategic. This 70% uh, uh, figure is definitely scientifically sound and it's good, but we know there is many places that even with a lower vaccination coverage, you can create an impact. And that is where things getting a little bit more complicated because you need scientists, we need data, we need surveillance to make sure where we can put our limited resources to create the biggest impact. What we learn is that by talking and creating documents, and I by myself, we are very good in writing report and, and preparing a standard. Yeah, that's important, but we cannot eliminate previous just from the office. No, we, 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 we do need to be, we need to think strategically on how we can better, better use the, the resources we have. For a lesson. You might recognize the people over there, Director General of the of WHO, uh, OIE, and FAO, former Director General that was at the time, um, which is extremely important. High-level decision making needs to be engaged from the international organization at country level. We cannot progress in a country if the Chief Veterinary Officer or Chief Medical Officer, they are not really committed to rabies. So that's our main target audience. However, we also know that local authorities, they play a huge role. Sometimes the capital are too far from the, from the ground. We need to bring these local authorities into the discussion to make sure that our, act, our activities are effective. The change should come from the, from the ground. Again, it's exactly the same what you're saying, Louis, about bringing, bringing 
funding from the from the country. And here is the private sector that I'm so glad to, to see it, people from the industry here. Again, there is a responsibility, there is a role to play, and we cannot just ignore. You need to be part of the, the chain as well. The fifth lesson I want to bring is uh, national investment. I'm not going to repeat what Louis already mentioned very eloquently. Uh, we do need big donor to bring the visibility, to bring the resources. We need people like Gavi, big philanthropists. We do need them to really help us to change the game. We need to show them that the, there, is a, there is a reason to invest, but we need to also, understand, they need to understand and we need to show them what are the impact of the, of the investment. Sixth lesson, I, I brought that photo as well from back in our last meeting in, in, in Wolfsburg. The traditional communities is still committed. And that is remarkable after so many years talking probably exactly the same kind of discussion, seeing progress, but we are still here. Right? We are still here, which is very good. However, it's a global effort. We need to focus on the country and the country needs to come here. What one of my biggest criticism of this meeting is that countries are not always well represented. We are still comfortable in a, in a nice room, but the, the people who are in the ground, they are not really engaged in the discussion. And we all together, and probably today, I hope, or during these next few days, we all discuss how we can bring them together, how we can bring the forum to them. So it's a kind of approach to the ground. And we need to bring new stakeholders. There are people there, they might have the solution, but we haven't really talked to them as yet. Final lesson learned, COVID, I was a, a meeting against Zoom uh, of the steering committee of the tripartite with the three director general talking about One Health. There was very little discussion about rabies. We we're talking about pandemic, new emerging disease, big trust fund mobilizing hundreds of dollars that I cannot even pronounce that big number. But rabies is not in the agenda any longer. And that was surprised because I can, again, being completely critic at home in Goa, my director general, every time we talk about public health, that was rabies, that was reference to rabies. And now it's shifting to wildlife, shifting to pandemic. So we know One Health is very high in the political agenda. You go outside and you talk about One Health, people might know what is One Health, but there is a risk of disease like Rabies get neglected in the whole discussion. So altogether, we need to make sure that the word rabies remains in the, in the discussion at the highest level, and we benefit of this new driver of the One Health in the political agenda. So that are my seven lessons. And a few questions I want to leave here in the, in the room that we need to be clear. Are we in the, in the right track? This is the right track. The discussion we had, this is a photo from 2015, where you change, you just move the guy back and you could say, well, we are all looking at the same front. Mm -hmm. That photo, Louis, that was a very nice photo where we celebrate that we have the, we launched the global strategic plan. It was a little celebration with nice champagne provided by Bernadette. There was just a group of friends having a drink and, and they moved to a, a big forum with the three director general talking about, about, uh, about rabies. Now we got a brand new website, seemed to be little, took us like six, seven years to get an agreement of how to get a website with the tripartite difficulties. Now we got a website that is a window to the world. And the question for all of us is, are we accountable for this goal of zero by 30? It's only eight years to go. Are we, going to, are we ready to sign that we, we are committed and we think we are going to achieve this elimination by, by 2030? I leave that question to you to answer and I hope in the next couple of days we visit the lesson learned and we can think in the future for, for the future. Before I, I close, over there there is a we want to do like a little SWOT analysis for strength, weakness, uh, opportunities a threat. So I would like or I will invite you to during the meeting please take some of the sticky notes and put your own, some thought. I think we can make a commitment of at least one sticky note from each of each of you so we can we can get some some results at the end of the day and the colleagues that they are listening to us in online if you if you want to do this uh, participate in this SWOT analysis you can send that by emails to Rachel or to me and we can collect your 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 input here um, I think with that I thank you for your attention and that is a, a good evolution of the new logo of the of GUA so here we are thank you very much <laughs>